Hello everyone, with only five days left to go until race day, I really need to get the Clio prepped. So yes, as you can see, I have a little bit of a list and I have a few parts sat here ready to go on. So I've just had to have the fire extinguisher serviced. You have to have it serviced every two years unless otherwise stated. Now, the companies that I take it to, they only last for one year. I had it tested in August last year, which means I needed to have it tested at the end of August this year. Obviously, we're now into September or nearly October, so this had to be serviced. As you can see, they fit a nice little sticker to say it has been serviced, which now enables me to pass scrutineering. We also have the new radio, which I have had for a long time, and I've been desperate to get this onto the clear because the one in the car right now is an absolute state. The only problem I had was I had this little hole here. Now, obviously, a lot of aftermarket parts, they just produce them for various models. So this particular radio would have fitted anywhere between the 1.2 clear all the way up to our 182s. And what I actually needed was just this, a little bung which sits in there, and now that deletes that hole. It's not got. It's got a nice little rubber seal as well, so that should be completely watertight. So I need to fit that and then get that into the car. Also, at the last race of Brands Hatch, um, I had another failure of the wheel bearing. This time it was on the offside rear, and what had actually happened was the spindle or the stub axle that sits behind, or that the disc and the wheel bearing sits on top of was absolutely chewed to pieces, so this piece here. Now, I've ordered another one, so this one is nice and smooth, there's nothing wrong with this one, so I'm gonna get this fitted up, and then gonna check to see if the disc that I've actually fitted is still in good working order. If not, I have got another pair there, I might just take them with me and risk this one, because that was only on for one race at Brands Hatch. I also got another problem. <laughs> at Brands Hatch, I broke my kill switch, or it broke. So the kill switch looks like that. For some reason, the back end had come off and it literally just killed the car dead. Luckily, this was at the end of the race as I was driving back to our paddock. So I cable tied this and it actually worked. But what I thought I'd do was obviously get a new one, um, which I did, and then I snapped it. Literally, I put all the wires back on the back of this and then as I did one of the nuts up, the whole thing just snapped off. So I've ordered another one, which hopefully will be here before race day. It should be here Thursday. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna jack the car up and I'm gonna get this hub on so that I know that this corner is absolutely spot on. Another thing on my to-do list was to fit my brand new racing seat. Now, I didn't bother recording it because it would have been super boring. It's literally four bolts, old one out, put the new one in, four bolts done up. However, I'm really, really happy with how this looks and feels. I've got it in the car and it is absolutely perfect. The driving position is so much better. Also, I just feel a lot more protected and I feel a lot more snug inside the car. So hopefully that will give me a little bit more confidence to push in braking zones, around fast corners, even slow corners. So we'll see. I don't know if I've got the wrong side because this is silky smooth. The washer is still in good condition. When I took this off at the track, it was absolutely chewed to bits. And I'm sure it was this side. But even the wheel bearing is absolutely fine as well. Nice and smooth, no play. I'm gonna have to take the other side, well, I'm gonna put this back together and I'm gonna have to take the other side off just to double check. So again, here's the other side, absolutely smooth. All right, on the other side, there is a bit of pitting and stuff, whereas this one hasn't got that. However, both are still perfectly usable. I don't really understand what we saw at the track, but it's fine, at least I've got spares. I will still take them with me just in case. Um, it's always good to have spare parts, especially something like that, because they're not that readily available, to be fair, especially with the ABS sensors and stuff, because you just can't really buy them, uh, proper genuine ones in anymore. Um, so, gonna get this back together and then work on the radiator, I guess. crack on with the radiator. I have already installed the bung. What I've also done is put some high temperature sealer 
round the threads and just round the edge and then I've screwed that in. So now hopefully there will definitely be no leaks. I know there's a rubber seal there already, but I just wanted to make doubly sure. Didn't want any leaks, didn't want any weeping coolant because that way the coolant system then doesn't become pressurized, which means the car can then overheat. So let's start stripping this down. So the old radiator is now out and just look at the state of this. You can see that it's all bowed out at the bottom. These three cores have separated and bowed out. All these fins are absolutely rotten and just dead. So it's definitely, definitely need to change in. And same with the top look. As you can see, the two top cores are bowed out as well. The whole radiator is just an absolute state. So I'm really, really happy that I'm now getting the chance to replace it. So I just need to swap the fan over onto the new unit and then we can get it pop in. Okay, so that's the radiator now in position. Obviously, what I would do now is run it up to temperature, bleed the cooling system. However, I can't do that until the kill switch arrives and I fit the new one in so that I can actually then turn the power on. So as it stands right now, I'm just gonna bleed it later. The only thing I can do without that kill switch right now is refit the fire extinguisher. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So refitting the fire extinguisher is a nice, easy job to do. I've just got to slide it in here, clip the front end into its little housing, the brackets up and now it's just a case of fitting the pull cords through their little holes all right so i bought a pair of little more grips to hold them okay that's them done Fire extinguisher is now back in place. I'm just going to quickly give give them a wiggle on the ho on the uh, pull cords I've got here. Make sure that you get that pull in that. Lovely. Let's go check the one on the bonnet. Yeah, I can see the whole handle move when I'm pulling that one. So again, that's another job well done. Okay, so annoyingly that kill switch is the only thing that's stopped me from having this car completely prepped, ready for the weekend. So. Fit the new kill switch is literally first of my priority. Once it gets here, we'll get it installed. Fit the new radiator, done. Fit the fire extinguisher, done. I've already fit the new race seat and fit the offside rear hub. Actually wasn't needed. So other than that, I think the car is ready to go. And as soon as the kill switch gets here, we'll get that installed, which will be... Okay, so here it is. Our new kill switch. So like I say, what I'd done is the first time this back piece had come away, killed the car, and then when I went to repair it earlier, I snapped the whole thing off. So I've got my new one here. I'm just gonna get that fitted, and that way we can actually run the car up, get everything up to temperature, bleed the radiator, and yeah, problem solved. Okay, so as I'm just replacing an existing kill switch, which is already in its place, all I need to do is just make sure that I transfer all the cables to their retrospective correct point on the new one. So on the back of the kill switch, I have two circuits here, one and two, clearly marked on the back, and then I have these two main power uh, points here. So what I need to do is make sure that I replace all of these to the correct points on this, and then hopefully, good as new. Okay, so the kill switch is now in its final position, all bolted up, everything all wired in properly, and I've turned the ignition on, so when we turn this on, we should hear everything fire up. As you can hear, the fuel pump and the dash and everything's just gone on, so that is job done.
there we go with the coolant system now completely bled up that was the last piece in the puzzle to get this car ready however unfortunately since i started filming this i'm now no longer able to attend mallory park i'm absolutely gutted however just with other commitments i already have in place i just don't have the ability to get to mallory park this weekend so that leaves me with the final race of the season at silverstone which i've already paid up for and this car is now ready for them Unfortunately, that's not until November, but at least I have half of the puzzle already completed, ready for uh, Silverstone to kick off. This does give me time to get things like Sprinter done, so I wanna try and get as much of the interior done before we get Silverstone. And with two months, I think that's really feasible. I think we can actually get a really good package sort of half built in the Sprinter, which will give us a little bit more comfort uh, come Silverstone as well. So obviously I've got other bits and pieces I need to be getting on with. So until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.